Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Nerd Pub, and thank you all so much for joining me for episode 2 of my very first Halloween special. Now today we're going to be reviewing the book Dracula that was written by Bram Stoker. Now Dracula was published in 1897, and ever since then Dracula's story has been told in numerous amounts of ways, featuring a variety of different faces to portray the character. Most famous, though, is probably Bela Lugosi from the 1930s classic that was produced by Universal Studios. This will be a spoiler-free review, but I will let you know to stick around because later in the video I have a surprise review for you guys that will be given to you by a very special guest. Let's get started. The book starts with London solicitor Jonathan Harker traveling to Transylvania to finalize real estate documents for a mysterious nobleman known as Count Dracula. During his stay at Castle Dracula, Jonathan Harker realizes there is more to the Count than meets the eye. Harker eventually becomes Dracula's prisoner and is left to be a victim of his vampiric brides. Dracula then travels to England and his vampiric activities are brought to the attention of Abraham Van Helsing, a doctor with experience on vampires and the undead. Van Helsing and the other main characters in the novel use every resource possible to put a stop to this evil once and for all. I thought this book was, for the most part, just decent. Which is unfortunate because I've always been a fan of his character in films and in other stories. Now I do acknowledge this book is a classic, but as a reader, I didn't enjoy it as much as I would have liked. I liked the story itself, but I didn't care for how the story was told. This novel is told from the perspective of the characters, whether it be from journal entries, letters, etc. I can appreciate how that adds a little bit of a realistic touch to the story, which is what I'm sure was Stoker's intention. But for me, the letters weren't very gripping. I found myself many times becoming bored, and I believe it has mostly to do with just the way it was written. Another issue I had is that for a book titled Dracula, the one thing that's lacking is, well, Dracula. He appears mostly in the first few chapters and in the end, but otherwise he makes very few appearances for what is actually a pretty long book. I know that it's not necessarily supposed to be all about Dracula and that it's more about how the other main characters team up to try and stop him, but I honestly feel like it would be better just to watch that in one of the many movies. The movies are faster paced and feel much more suspenseful on screen. Now if you're a fan of Dracula, I would say feel free to read the novel, but mostly just to say that you've read it. If you're new to the character and haven't read the novel or seen the movies, I definitely recommend watching the movies first. I give Dracula by Bram Stoker a C+. And there you have it, everyone. Those are my thoughts about Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, if any of you have read this book, I'd be very interested to read what you guys thought about it, so be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. And now, everyone, it's time for our surprise review. Now, for the first part of this video, I was reviewing the original book that featured Dracula. But now, my beautiful wife Kelsey, who is a self-published author who writes under the name K.J. Bryan, will be reviewing a more recent story that also featured the famous vampire. And without further ado, take it away, Kelsey. Hey everyone, my name is Kelsey Bryant, and I'm going to be reviewing The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. The story follows a young woman who while in her father's library, stumbles upon an odd book and letters from her father hinting at something very dark and mysterious about his past. When he starts to tell her the story, she begins to learn the terrifying truth that Vlad the Impaler, or Dracula, still walks the earth. As she slowly uncovers her father's frightening past, strange things begin to happen around her that make her scared for both her father and herself. First of all, I want to say that this was very close to being one of my favorite books of all time. But sadly, it ended up falling short due to several flaws. The first 200 pages were great. The story was very suspenseful and fast-paced, and I couldn't seem to stop reading. Unfortunately, after about page 200 or so, the storyline begins to taper off. It becomes almost exclusively about her father's past rather than the present, which isn't as suspenseful because, well, her father is obviously still alive. Aside from the story shifting almost entirely to her father's past, it also slows down quite significantly through the middle. 
it becomes a bit bogged down in the history, and it goes long periods of time without much happening. There are also a lot of strange coincidences in the book that are never fully explained. It almost seems like there is a higher power at play, but her father is a self-proclaimed atheist. When the book never explains these weird coincidences, I found myself a bit confused. My final grievance with this book is the ending. The Historian is a very long book, over 600 pages, and much like Bram Stoker's Dracula, Dracula himself isn't seen through most of the book. So after going through this long journey with the characters and building up to the final reveal of Dracula, the ending, unfortunately, doesn't live up. I found it rushed and anticlimactic. After finally closing the book, I felt like I was just wanting more of something that I sadly never got. So what's my rating? I absolutely loved the first third of this book, and I love the imagery. Elizabeth Kostova is a master at imagery, and her descriptions of the cities that the main characters visit are beautiful. Unfortunately, the story's pacing slowed drastically after the first 200 pages, and the ending was disappointing. So with all that said, I'm giving The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova a B. Thanks so much for joining us, Kelsey. Everyone, please be sure to go check out KJ Bryan at her Facebook page, and from there you'll be able to find a link to her website. I'll post the link to her Facebook page in the description below. Also, recently, Matthew from The Geeks Attic did a review over one of KJ Bryan's books, Locked. I'll be sure to provide a link to that video down in the description below also, so be sure to go check that out if you guys are curious about any of her books. Thank you all so much for joining me again today. I hope that you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please be sure to like and share this video. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to the channel to stay updated for more content, such as reviews, live stream discussions, vlogs, and much, much more. Thank you all again so much, and have a great day.